Welcome to Altium Designer Creating PCB Footprints. In this module, we will learn how to create footprints for the PCB. We will start by creating a simple footprint manually, and then for a more complex footprint, we will employ the built-in IPC footprint wizard. PCB footprints are composed typically of electrical and visual elements. The visual elements include silkscreen as well as 3D modeling of the physical component. The electrical is either a single layer metal for surface mount devices or through hole involving all the layers. To start, we will open a new PCB library using File, New, Library, PCB Library. This also comes with a default component, just like the new schematic library did. Renaming the footprint is easy, just double click on its entry in the PCB library panel. Now with the PCB library component window open, we can change the name. Let's enter 2-pin device for its name. We could set the height and provide a description at this point as well. Adding a description is helpful when performing searches. We're going to add a 3D model to this so we won't be adding the height manually here. Of special interest is the type setting. Clicking on that pull down gives us a number of options. Standard, standard no bill of materials, mechanical, graphic, jumper, and net tie types. We will use the standard type. The mechanical type is used for stiffeners, while the graphic is used to add company graphics to the layout. Net ties are a special case that we will not cover here, but if you're interested, please go to the tech docs to learn more. Clicking OK closes the window with the new settings. When manually creating a footprint, taking advantage of the grids by setting it to a helpful spacing is highly recommended. This allows for a quick placement of correctly spaced pads while avoiding the issues. Click on the grid icon, it looks like a screen, and select Set Global Snap Grid. We can set the XY grid spacing here by entering our desired pad pitch. We will enter 200 mil and hit OK. Notice the grid change. Now when we place pads, they will snap to this 200 mil spaced grid. To start placing pads, click on the Place, Pad, to enter into the pad placement mode. Before we click anywhere, hit the Tab key so that we can set the desired properties prior to placement. In the Size and Shape section, we have access to both X and Y size settings, along with the shape. Clicking on Shape, we can select from the options. For the first pin, pin 1, we will use the rectangular selection. Now setting the X and Y pad sizes to 50 mil, we move to the Hole Size section of the window. As this is a through-hole footprint, we would need to set the hole size. Clicking on the hole size field and enter 25 mil. We will leave the shape of the hole as round and keep it plated. We will leave the layer setting to multi-layer. Clicking on it shows our various layer options that could be selected. We will not assign it to a net at this point and will leave the electrical type set to default load. The important entry here is the designator field. This must match the schematic symbols or there will be errors. As you recall, when we compiled the integrated library, we saw the result of a pin mismatch, which required a fix to the schematic symbol. We will ensure that it is set to 1. A good approach is to allow for the PCB rules to drive the paste mask and solder mask expansions. This enables the PCB fabrication and assembly house requirements to drive the final sizes for the PCB by using rules. If needed, these can be overruled by clicking on the Specify Value checkbox and entering fixed numbers. Clicking OK, we can now place this pad. Once we click to place the pad, notice the Auto Increment feature setting the next pad to 2. Before we place the second pad, hit the Tab key to switch the pad shape from square to round, and hit OK. Now let's place it. Right-click with the mouse to escape the pin placement mode. At this point, we should set the origin of this part using one of the defined means. Edit, Set Reference, and then pick the appropriate means. Some companies require pin 1 as the origin. In this example, we will use center. Setting the origin is an important step, both to prevent issues in placement and to ensure the behavior of the part when rotated, as the origin is the pivot point. When the origin is not set properly, the effect is seen upon placement of the footprint on the PCB. Sometimes it's not where it should be, and in some cases the origin is miles away so that the PCB appears not to have anything on it. In reality, the footprint is just out of view, so please don't forget to set the reference point. Now with the pins and reference set, we can add graphics. Click on either Place and Select Line or the Line icon. 
And now with the mouse ready to place a line, hit the tab key to set the layer prior to starting placing the line. Normally we would pick the top overlay layer and set the line width. Now with some simple graphics added to the outer silkscreen layer, we can turn our attention to the addition of 3D modeling. 3D modeling can be accomplished in one of two ways. Manually adding 3D model elements to the footprint or placing a step file that represents the component. Note, before starting the 3D body placement, consider changing the snap grid to facilitate the creation of the various 3D bodies. Again, the snap grid is your friend and guide. Clicking on Place, select 3D Body to open up the 3D Body Properties window. Here we see a few options, Extruded, Cylinder, Sphere, and the generic 3D model, which we would use for adding a step file. Let's start by adding an extruded body. We can set its color by clicking on the color block. Now we can set the overall height and the standoff height or the elevation off the PCB. There are a number of other options which we will leave to the user to play with. Clicking OK, we can now define the 3D extruded body shape using multiple clicks of the mouse. Once we have a closed shape, right click and you will see the 3D body. Clicking on the number 3 key switches to 3D mode and we can see the results of the placement of this 3D model. Holding the shift key down and clicking and holding the right mouse button, we can rotate the view. Switching back to the 2D view by hitting the 2 key, let's place a couple of cylinders and then place spheres on top of those cylinders as further examples of modeling. These can be added to create very complex models if needed. The one limitation is there's no means for cutting out an existing extrusion. This will need to be accommodated by using multiple 3D bodies placed or, if possible, a step file. Open the 3D Body property window and select Cylinder, and then select Color, Radius, Overall Height, Standoff Height, and if needed, Rotation Values for the various axes. Now click on the sphere, and let's create it so that its standoff is the same height as the cylinder we just placed. That will put a rounded top on the cylinder head. As you can see, very complex modeling of a component can be done. What if your component needs mounting holes? Let's add two for this component. Going back to the 2D mode and selecting Place Pad, now in the Pad Properties window, select the pad sizes and hole size to be the desired dimensions, and change the designator to MH for mounting hole. Leave the layer set to multi-layer for a through-hole feature. Now in 3D mode, we see the device with its mounting holes. Using the manual method is easy enough for simple footprints. But when you need to create a high pin count device that is IPC footprint compatible, we can use the IPC compliant wizard. To start it, go to the Tools pull down menu and select IPC compliant footprint wizard. This starts the wizard. We will follow the steps to create a footprint. Start by clicking on Next. Here we see the type of package we are creating a footprint for. Let's pick BGA and continue. In the next series of windows, we can set the various settings based on the target device's datasheet. We will just use the defaults for this example, but we'll set the pad diameter to the maximum material condition called out in the IPC standard by enabling it. Now that we have generated an IPC compliant footprint based on our inputs, we should verify that the footprint dimensions reflect the data sheets, as in some cases the interpretation of the data sheet values may be misleading. After saving the footprint library, we can now use these footprints for schematic symbols.